Epic Games. Okay, guys, that's a wrap. Uh, wait! Don't you want to see my... <gasps> Mr. Krabs. What's this? More junk mail. Let me guess. Free tickets to Neptune's Paradise. Why don't you give them the moron back there for being employee of the year? <laughs> SpongeBob? Yes, Mr. Krabs. Here's two free. Uh, I mean, very valuable tickets to Neptune's Paradise. Gee, thanks, Mr. Krabs. You must have spent a fortune on these. Mm. Let me tell Patrick. <laughs> thanks again. Hmm. I know I am, but what are you? Hey, Patrick. SpongeBob? Patrick! SpongeBob? Patrick! SpongeBob. I'm behind you, Patrick. Hey, SpongeBob. Mr. Krabs gave us two free tickets to Neptune's Paradise! Neptune's Paradise? You go home and get ready, and we'll meet up later after work. Hello everybody, welcome to Let's Play Spongebob Employee of the Month. This is going to be a little short one from me, uh, probably only four parts. I think there are four chapters in this game. Uh, I'm playing this on a Windows XP virtual machine on my computer because getting this game to run properly on modern operating systems is a pain in the ass. I find it virtually impossible to get it working on Windows 10. I'm sure I could if I really put my back into it, but it's easier to do it this way. And uh, yeah, this is a, a very short and simple point and click adventure type game. One of several that uh, they made for SpongeBob back in the early 2000s. I believe the first one was Operation Krabby Patty, which shared this game's uh, beautiful graphics that you could see. Uh, <laughs> I mean, the graphics here in the actual gameplay are, you know, nothing to write home about exactly. I guess for, you know, a CD-ROM game from 2002, it's not so bad, but the cutscene graphics are uh, pretty butt ugly. Um, and have terrible lip-syncing. So, anyway, I've never played Operation Krabby Patty, but, uh, that game is similar. And then they made this one, and then there was the PC version of Battle for Bikini Bottom, which is not a platformer like the console version. Uh, it's a, uh game more like this. I know they also made one for the movie game, they made one for Lights, Camera, Pants, and I think that might have been it. I don't remember them making a PC version of Creature from the Krusty Krab, and if they did, I don't think it was anything different, and I don't think it was like this. I don't know if they ever made another Spongebob adventure game of this type. Um, also, I'm not doing it right now, but I'm going to try to let much of the actual dialogue go uncommented over. This is just kind of talking about things that you already know, and this first section inside the Krusty Krab is essentially a tutorial to teach you how to play point-click video games, if you've never done that before, um, in terms of getting things and talking to people and, uh, combining things in your inventory in order to get information. Um, so, yeah, anyway, this game is about we're supposed to go to the theme park. We have tickets, and uh, it's SpongeBob's life, so nothing can be simple. I can relate. Um, so, uh, yeah, we're going to run into a number of obstacles on our way to Neptune's Paradise, which I don't even remember you actually seeing in the game, like, at the end, when you spoilers get to it. Um, 
there should be multiple endings to this game. They should have had a bad ending where, like, you die on the <laughs> SpongeBob dies on the way to Neptune's paradise. I was just thinking the um the animation in the cutscenes also it kind of looks like a downgraded version of the animation in the uh, SpongeBob 4D ride from. I think that was from around the same time, like 2003. This game is from 2002, if I remember correctly. Oh, and by the way, I probably should mention that the whole reason I'm doing this game right now is because this month, July 2024, is uh, the 25th anniversary of SpongeBob. Uh, July 17th, 1999 being the like official start date of the series, even though astute SpongeBobologists will know um, the first first episode, which is the first three, uh, the help wanted one, and the one where he meets Sandy, and the reef blower one, those all, or at least one of them premiered, I just dropped something, one of them premiered on, uh, May 1st of that year, after the Kids' Choice Awards. Um, anyway, point is, 1999 was the year Spongebob started, this is the 25th anniversary, I was gonna try to upload the first part of this, here's Spongebob coming on the screen, uh, this is just me showing off that you can click on a lot of the things in the world, and most of them Spongebob will just say a little thing, sometimes they'll move around or do something, uh, and other times you can actually affect them. And, uh, it's super obvious when they are things that you can pick up. And yes, right now we've been just, uh, taking our time with the very simple task of, uh, cleaning a plate, the one plate that we have in the whole Krusty Krab, getting Krabby Patty stuff, and making a Krabby Patty to give to the man so that he will tell us something. Uh, and get ready to see this guy a few times. Uh, more spoilers, we're going to see him in every chapter of the game. I will not spoil why. That'll be for you to enjoy finding out later on in the game. But yeah. Um, enjoy the dialogue while I try to remember what I was talking about before. Every day. Now leave me alone. I'm eaten. I like the old jig he did. And I like this map. It's going to be really nice when it is fully colored and it's going to look beautiful. Anyway, yeah, for some reason we needed to uh, have that guy tell us that the place to find the bus to Neptune's Paradise is the bus stop. Uh, but yeah, here's Patrick and he has his camera that we saw on the little uh, title card thing. Anyway, I'm still trying to think of what I was talking about earlier, so enjoy the Patrick dialogue. Hey, Patrick, you wouldn't happen to have any bus tokens, would you? Uh, no, SpongeBob, I don't have any. What are we gonna do? Don't worry, Patrick. I'll find us a couple somehow. Okay, I remember. Um, I was going to try to upload this first part on July 17th to make it epic for the 25th anniversary, but... I uh, didn't do that. I don't even remember why, but I, um, I've mostly just been busy the last couple weeks. I thankfully finally am working again after uh, people who watch the GTA 5 LP will know that I was looking for work for a pretty long while and not really hearing back from anything. So I'm actually back at a previous job, which is fine. Um, but I've just been, like, settling back into that routine and not really feeling like doing anything, which is also why I've been snoozing on streaming, which I'm hoping to rectify in the latter half of this week, either on Wednesday or Friday, or preferably both. I like the sound of Patrick, like, throwing up. Um... Anyway, yeah, I've uh, I've just been busy with that and with other things, like I was out of town over the weekend, so I also have been slow to getting to this, even though I'm pretty sure I recorded... Yeah, I, rec I recorded the gameplay for this in February. Um, just for this first part, though, I, have, I still have to go and record the rest of the game, which is not very much. This game, you can beat this game in, like... Prob I mean, I was going to say an hour, but honestly, well under that if you're really trying. But I'm just saying, even if you're just taking this game, even if you're taking your time like I'm going to be doing, this run is only going to be 
Like, I would, I would be surprised if it exceeds, like, two hours. I love this dude. priceless. Much like the compliment you just paid me. I can never thank you enough. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, okay. Never look a gypsy horse in the mouth. That's what I always say. So yeah, these are videotapes. There's one of these in each uh, place and uh, in each chapter, I think. And uh, they have uh, porn on them. They have SpongeBob hentai on them. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. That would be cool, though. Uh, no, it's, um, I forget what they even are, but it's some extra bullshit. I don't even know if I remember where all the other ones are. But yeah, I mostly just recorded this back in February just to, like, test the virtual machine and recording on that and see how it looked and everything, and also because I figured I would eventually be doing that. And yeah, you gotta make him walk around the stupid oil pile or he'll shit himself. For those who may not know, this will not be a child-friendly playthrough of this game. Or much of an informative one, but I feel like it kind of speaks for itself. You can see what I'm doing. I like that guy in the back. I like that he's not a real, um, like, guy. He's, uh, he's like a, a moving part of the background, you know what I mean? Anyway, here's Larry. He's a central element of this Goolagoon, of this chapter one. A lot of this shit hinges on Goolagoon. And yeah, we need Old Shovely and Mr. Pale for a task that we have not been told we have yet. Look over there! A mermaid, and she's looking at you. Ooh, good thing I haven't fallen off my diet. Where? Hey! There's no mermaid. Hey, Larry, what can I do to get big and strong like you? Well, SpongeBob, it's not easy. First of all, you have to wake up each morning at 3 a.m. and go for a 10-mile run. Okay! Then you have to do five sets of exercises, isolating each muscle group. Ten repetitions each. It's gonna hurt. Piece of cake! Finally, you gotta stop eating those fatty, crabby patties. What? That's crazy talk! Forget about it! See? It takes discipline. No Krabby Patties, huh? Don't you ever get tempted to cheat on that diet? Nah, the only thing I really miss are Grandma's homemade pies. Hmm, I sure wish I could eat those. I wonder if that's gonna have any relevance to anything. I wonder if the little telescope icon <laughs> had anything to do with what he just said. Uh, I didn't show what area we just unlocked with that, but... You can probably guess, based on what he said. Um, anyway, here is a woman who is not a real character in Spongebob and is British. And she has an umbrella, and I think you can guess why we are even bothering to talk to her. We need the umbrella at some point. Oh, I'm sorry. It's a parasol. It's a beautiful place. You'd like it, I'm quite sure. The water is much warmer here in the Pacific, but you know what they say. It's not the heat that gets you, it's the salinity. Yeah, uh, so what brings you to Bikini Bottom? The beautiful beaches, the charming townsfolk, and the legends of buried pirate treasure. I find it all so quaint. But, oh, the heat is overwhelming. Did you say buried treasure? What buried treasure? <sighs> Why, the Flying Dutchman's buried treasure, of course. Legend has it the Flying Dutchman buried his most precious treasure on the shores of Goo Lagoon. I'll, okay, so first of all, I'm listening to this woman's voice, and first of all, this is clearly a man. And secondly, uh, and more importantly... I don't know why she sounds like she's talking into, like, a tin can. Just the, the, like, the acoustics of the voice recording for her are different than everybody else. Like, they had to record it in her bedroom or something. Or his bedroom, I should say. I swear, I'm innocent. I didn't do anything. You can't prove that. I was only saying hi. Oh, well, I'm busy. Busy doing nothing, that is. Okay, have fun. 
I like to say stuff like that to strangers. Like the blue lady looking like she's dying in the corner. Hi! Right back at you. Wow, you sure are tan. Yes, I certainly am. But what else would you expect, man? I own the salon. I must Oh, not to talk over the epic Ray, who we are going to take his sunscreen, which we will need to trade for yet another item that we will get from yet another character. That you can you can see how this goes. You you know how this kind of shit works. It's a video game. Yeah, it's just he's tanning his soul, and um, I forgot to plug the poll. I might as well, since I haven't streamed yet since I first posted it. But yeah, at the end of the Mario 64 uh, stream series, I don't know, uh, I mentioned, uh, I posted a poll, um, a, a Google Forms poll uh, of what game I should play on stream and therefore probably also upload videos on here of next and uh yeah uh, do that it only has it only got a few more responses from being on the end being tacked on to the end of mario 64 so i figured i would mention it here it'll be at the top of the description and then it'll go away after like two days and then this won't be relevant to anyone else watching this so uh, but yeah, if you haven't yet, do uh, fill out the poll like to see what people would like to see next. I was also thinking about... Uh, I've been thinking recently about trying to sort of resurrect the uh, the Timbo channel, the, the original channel, uh, the other one, which I haven't updated in a long time. And I don't really know what to do with that or if there's any interest in me doing that. Um, during the GTA 5 LP, I spoke about having a sort of inkling of wanting to do movie reviews again. Oh, wait, I don't want to talk about this. This is fun. Ah, our dear friend Mr. Krabs makes his way to the local <clears throat> bargain mart to make a little extra money on the side. He is such a god. He makes me laugh so. Ha ha. Ha ha. Anyway, here's uh, Grandma's house. We're gonna go uh, talk to Grandma, who is supposed to look like a normal sponge, like SpongeBob's parents, but in this, just straight up looks like a fucking cookie, um, which is appropriate. She looks like a cookie, right? She, her head looks like a cookie with a little dollop of cream on top. It's actually pretty cute. And I don't know if this is Marion Ross uh, voicing her. She voices her in the show. Um, but I, it definitely sounds like her, so that's cool. And they managed to get, uh, uh, Clancy Brown to play Mr. Krabs this time around, uh, instead of that poser Joe White from Battle for Bikini Bottom. That's, like, one of the only main flaws with that game, is they somehow couldn't get one of the, like, principal voice actors to play this major character. I don't know, I can't, I don't remember if Ernest Borgnine voices Mermaid Man in this, because spoiler, Mermaid Man is in this, and uh, I know Tim Conway voices Barnacle Boy still, he almost, I think he always does, not now, they're both dead, but, uh, yeah, in the past. Anyway, whatever, I don't know, um, yeah, and uh, Grandma thinks we're Patrick, she's senile, it's kind of fucked up honestly i was i was like feeling bad when i was playing this because he keeps he keeps just trying to have a normal conversation with his grandma hey there it is it's all nice and lit up isn't that nice um he's trying to have a normal conversation with grandma and she keeps just saying wow patrick i love you and your and your pink skin and your five points and your fucking dun and your face um and uh i don't know it's kind of sad <laughs> i mean silly but i don't know Anyway, here's the Bargain Mart, uh, which Mr. Krabs earlier calls the Bargain Mart, which is funny. And he seems to have sold his clothes to this man. And there's a disgusting car sticking out like a sore thumb in the parking lot. You can imagine that we're probably going to have to do something with that. Not drive it, though. Anyway, I was saying earlier, uh, I said during the GTA 5 LP that I was, I had watched some of my old movie review videos and was like, 
waxing nostalgic about that and was like, oh, that'd be a fun thing to get into. I like talking about movies, and on the occasion, I haven't really been seeing a lot of new movies, but when I have seen them, I've, like, had thoughts about them, and I've just thought to myself, like, oh, yeah, it would be nice to to talk about them. People liked when I did that. Uh, pe- a couple of people in recent months have, you know, said that they would like to see that and or the let's watches come back so that's the other thing i was thinking of is like um doing those mostly as streams the let's watches of movies and videos both by myself and with friends and uploading basically highlight reels as the videos with the full reactions being like patreon or twitch sub perks you know what i mean uh anyway i'm basically just thinking out loud and rambling right now i'm sorry but uh that is something else that I've been thinking about doing sometime. So I don't know. If anyone is... If that sounds cool to you and you want to encourage me to do it, please do. <laughs> anyway, yeah, Mr. Krabs is naked. No, no, no! I'm sorry, Mr. Krabs. I'll be at work right on time. Don't you worry about it. Good. Now get going. You're scaring away me business. Absolutely, Mr. Krabs. Thank you. Money, money, money. Mr. Krabs, can I borrow this old cooking oil? Take it! Pearl convinced me to switch to some new low-fat oil type substance. You spray it on. Now, who would have thought of that? Money, money, money. Like that little uh, dance he did. Hello again. His little victory dances are good. Always a pleasure, loyal employee. Uh, Mr. Krabs, what happened to your uh, clothes? Sold them. Yes, sir. Someone with a keen eye for fashion made me an offer I couldn't refuse. But you're naked. Money, 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 money. That's the shit I'm trying to be on. Being unemployed and poor really uh, made me wish that I had a lot of money and like made that be a, a thing that I want. <laughs> Not that I didn't want to have money before. I just wanted to be comfortable. But now it's like, I, I yeah. <laughs> Anyway, here's the fun part. We get to clean the car instead of paying money. And yeah, you don't have to get all of it, but you do have to get most of it. And then they'll fill in all the little pixels for you. And yeah, I like that you're just using a SpongeBob. Pretty good car for a guy working at the bargain mart. It was a cashier. Jeez. Hi. Welcome to the bargain mart. Either the, like, minimum wage in Bikini Bottom must be pretty high, or prices must be super low, because, like, Spongebob is canonically underpaid at the Krusty Krab, but is still able to, like, buy products and live life, so, yeah. So yeah, I just decided I would, uh, click on some of these little guys and also it's good to go in this aisle because they have urchin chips and you need urchin chips to give to grandma to make pie so we're gonna do that so now we have all of the things except for the pail but that's the next thing we need we need the pail and we need the uh, well, we need the parasol, but not yet. We don't know we need the parasol yet, but we're gonna need it. But once we have those two things, we will then have everything we need to be one-third of the way to getting- or one-fourth of the way of getting to Neptune's Paradise. Um, I just realized I didn't really talk very much about, like, this game or my relationship with it, which I usually do at the starts of these LPs. Oh, wait, here, before I do that, let's watch, uh... Let's watch Larry Cave. I can't eat that. I'm not allowed. My trainer would get mad. Mm, there's nothing like Grandma's homemade pie. Still warm from the oven. I'm on a diet. I can't eat that. Uh, um, okay, let me have it. Look at what you've done to me. I've got love handles. I can't talk to you. I've got to take a jog down the beach. We got it. I love how you have to listen to that guy grunt for 10 minutes every time you're on this place trying to talk to Larry. 
So yeah, now all the ingredients are gonna come together. That's what the last like five minutes of this is, is us just giving everyone their different products. Here's me kind of forgetting what we were doing. Because yeah, we don't have anything for her yet. I need to... Yeah. Need to get some else first. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I was gonna say, as far as, like, my relationship with this game, as you can imagine, this was a game that I liked a lot as a kid. Um, it's also one that I've, like, wanted to LP for ever, but, uh, never have until now. And, uh, yeah, it was one of my favorite, like, PC games as a kid. My gaming as a kid, as, like, a little kid, was primarily on the computer, and it was, like, this... Uh, the, like, 3D space pinball game, Snood, The Sims, and Roller Coaster Tycoon 2. And then just, like, licensed platformers like Battle for Bikini Bottom on console, pretty much. And that's, uh, basically what my gaming experience was until I was, like, probably 12 or 13, and that's when I started playing some older video games still mostly platformers but started branching out just a little bit um anyway this was uh one of two games that i remember buying from the scholastic magazine when i was like i think i was in like second grade when i played this i mean it came out in the fall of 2002 which I wasn't even in first grade then. I don't know if I got it right when it came out, but it wasn't much longer. It wasn't very long after, I mean. Um, so I was like, yeah, I was really young. I was probably in first grade. And then I, yeah, Battle for Bikini Bottom came out when it was in first grade. And there was a year or two where I just kind of like alternated between those two. And then the movie came out the next year. Man, I was, ah, oh, it was a good time. Being six years old is so sick. Um, anyway, the other game that I remember buying from the magazine was, uh, Toon Twister 3D, which is like a, it's like Windows Movie Maker with Nickelodeon people and pre-recorded lines. Um, and if I can get that running on the virtual machine, if I can find a copy of, a, a perfectly legal, of course, copy of that to play i would like to do a video on that sometime as well and uh and you know make a an amazing nickelodeon nicktoons film in the in the game i'd also like to do a video on this is completely unrelated the movies if anyone knows, is familiar with that game uh from like 2006 or something where it was like it looks like the sims 2 but you just make movies I found it like weirdly complicated and restrictive when I was a kid, but I did play it, and uh, it would be fun to revisit that too. Anyway, here's this bitch-ass bus driver who ultimately is correct that the rain is gonna come soon, um, and he gives and yeah, you give him the umbrella. I guess I was supposed to do this and then like, oh, I need a parasol. Wait, that reminds me of the British ladyfish. And then go back. Uh, but no, whatever. I, I uh, precognitively knew that I would need to give the bus driver a parasol to ultimately not even convince him. The thing that convinces him is just SpongeBob being annoying. Anyway, um, I'm going to let the ending cutscene that will take us into chapter two and end the video, I'm going to let it go without any further comment. Uh, there's more beautiful animation and hilarious hijinks to be had in this last couple minutes. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll see you guys next time for part two.
Ah! Silence, you ignorant buffoons! <laughs> Enough! Enough! Get back up here in your seat and stop making so much noise. <laughs> and that goes for you too, tough guy. <laughs> Finally! Uh, looks like rain. Mm, I can barely see where I'm going. Uh, hold on, Whoa! everybody! The raging world! Raging world. Oh. Stay here until the storm blows over. Um, Patrick, this doesn't look like Neptune's paradise. Uh oh.